Good afternoon YouTube, this is Warbles on a lot here and this is the 500th movie on my scroll and because my channel was put on YouTube in order to publicise the results of the Sunfoil project I decided I'd have to make this movie about Sunfoils and because the third prototype Sunfoil has been on the roof of my car for almost two years we're 10 days off it. It saves 5.33 litres of petrol per week. So as of today, it saved 525 litres of petrol. 525 litres at $1.52.7 each. It means uh, $801 that this has saved. It also means that uh, 2.5 kilograms per litre of fuel burned, it saved 1.33 tonnes of atmospheric carbon from going up the exhaust. So I thought I would uh, treat it to some sign writing. So this is the Sunfoil third prototype. And that is the left wingtip. And uh, the trailing quarter panel tells you that she's 75 percent which makes more sense when you can see the trailing facet which says piston hybrid solar and that's so that when I overtake people they can see what's happened to them on the highway they have been overtaken by the future the driver's side trailing quarter panel says 25 percent and that's because the figures are a little bit uh, subtle, but four or five years ago, this car used to travel eight kilometres per litre of fuel. And that's with a regime monthly. We're not talking one tank here, we're talking per month. But that regime has me doing 100 kilometres an hour on the highway, which is the legal maximum speed. It has me doing 20% of my driving at less than 50 kilometres an hour in town. It has me doing 5% off-road in four-wheel drive. So that's the regime, 75%, 20%, 5%, 8 kilometres per litre per month, cruising at 100 k's maximum legal speed on the highway. For the last two years, under that regime, I've been travelling 10.66 kilometres per litre. Now 2.66 as a fraction, or a proportion, or a percentage of the 8 kilometres I used to go, it means that this has got me travelling 33.25% further on every litre. So it's made the fuel efficiency one third better, 33.25%. It does not mean that I'm driving a 33% hybrid though. It means that when I drive four kilometres, I've put enough fuel in that back in the old days, the unmodified car would have been able to go three. So three kilometres on petrol and one kilometre because of the solar panel. And I could spend thousands of dollars worrying about the paint and trying to make that smooth and shiny and that wouldn't change the fuel burn at all. But putting a sunfoil on the roof, yeah, that means I burn less fuel. I've been putting 660 kilograms of carbon dioxide per year less into the air. I have not been quite the filthy fossil fueled fool that I would otherwise have been. And the reason that putting a streamlined solar panel or a sun foil, an aero foil which runs on sunlight, the reason that putting that on a motor car saves so much fuel is because a normal vehicle's electrical system is designed to power the headlights at the red lights when the engine is idling and it's got to keep the motor running while the stereo's on while your foot's on the brake pedal and the brake lights are on and you could even have the heater fan going 
as well. So it's designed for maximum electrical output at minimum engine speed. Otherwise you will drain your battery to the point where it cannot power the coil which provides the electricity through the distributor to fire the spark plugs and ignite the petrol. So therefore, when the battery shows its low voltage to the alternator, the alternator's regulator feeds electricity from the battery into the center of the alternator. It turns the center of the alternator into an electromagnet. And as you spin the electromagnet, it sweeps its magnetic field past the coils of wire in the outside part of the alternator, what they call the stator, and that induces an electric current. And the regulator feeds the battery as much current as it needs. But this does require to be turning at 4,000 revs a minute in order to reach peak efficiency, and when you're idling at the traffic lights, the engine's only doing 850 or so. So there's a step up belt, which means that the alternator runs at twice the speed of the engine in this car. Modern cars it runs at three times the speed, but in this car it's twice the speed. Meaning a battery which is just a little bit flat demands the alternator feed it with electricity, which demands the belt feed the alternator with torque, which demands the crankshaft feed the belt with torque. Which means you have to pump fuel into the engine and burn it to make that torque. This vehicle, because it has a solar panel sitting on the roof, even on a cloudy day like today, the panel supplies the solar battery charge regulator with current. The solar battery charge regulator checks the battery voltage and it tries to keep the battery between 13.5 and 14.5 volts. So when I go to start the car, the battery is full. When I go to drive the car, the alternator only has to uh, recharge following one engine start. And one engine start in this car is a twentieth of an amp hour. 30 seconds after I start the engine, the alternator has had to uh, back off and back off and back off and finally the alternator is unable to put any current at all into the battery without its voltage rising beyond the alternator's regulator maximum voltage point. So the alternator becomes a turnaround pulley for the water pump. And as long as the panel is able to produce more than a third of an amp, that's enough to run the spark plugs, the fuel pump, and the radio. So during daylight, unless it's raining really heavily, the alternator doesn't have to produce any electricity and you don't have to burn any fuel to drive the belt to spin the alternator. Right? Come night time, if you start the engine, the battery is so full that it can throw 10% of its rated capacity at the headlights. And this car runs its headlights as deep cycle solar powered headlights for the first 10 minutes. And I only live 15 minutes drive from town. That's a fairly important factor, 15 minutes drive from town. It's my longest drive. I wrote down the engine start and stop times for a year to discover that my average engine run time is six and a half minutes. This is a graph showing how long it takes a motor car alternator to finish recharging a car battery once you start the motor and the battery shows its low voltage to the alternator. Now it doesn't actually matter quite how far down the battery is. If you've got a 50 amp alternator and the battery needs 30 amps, it will probably start charging at something close to 50 amps and as the voltage rises in the battery, the alternator will back off its output. So, 45 minutes to fully recharge. 
I live 15 kilometres from town, my average engine run time is six and a half minutes. So there I am at 70% uh, of a charge going into my battery. After a hundred days of that regime, my battery is permanently resting at 30% flat. And whereas if the battery is 100% full when you start the engine, you don't have to burn any fuel to recharge the battery from the previous regime, the acquired accumulated deficit, plus the time spent sitting in the car park, running the dashboard clock, and the stereo's memory chip, which between them in this car, sucks one-tenth of an amp from the battery. One-tenth of an amp for 24 hours is 2.4 amp hours. Add on to that the fact that the battery is a 95 amp hour rated capacity battery and a battery loses 1% of its stored charge for every day that it sits there not connected to anything, not doing anything. It just loses that 1% to chemical sulfation. Now 0.95 of an amp hour does not sound like much. However, the starter motor on this car draws 98 amps for 2 seconds which is 0.05 of an amp hour. So you can start the engine 20 times on 1 amp hour, you can start the engine 19 times just on what the battery loses to chemical sulfation in one day. So add your 95% of an amp hour to your 2.4 amp hours and you come up with 3.35 amp hours disappears from the battery just by parking the car under the tree for 24 hours. You've got to put 110% back into the battery of whatever you've taken out of it. So every day this battery is going to say to the alternator if you start the engine I want 3.68 amp hours. This is a 1.7 amp solar panel. So two hours of a sunny day and the battery goes to bed full. Takes a bit longer on a cloudy day like this but even if it was raining after 10 hours of a rainy day the battery goes to bed full. So if the battery's full I use 0% of my fuel burn to make the horsepower to run the belt, to turn the alternator, to kiss and make up for the time in the parking lot. I used to spend 30% of my fuel burn. A car that lives in a small country town, like say Glen Innes, with a population of 10,000, with an average engine run time of 3 minutes, only has time to put 40% of a recharge into the battery, so its battery will be 60% flat, only 40% charged. My son is an auto electrician. His boss recently told me a story of a BMW that lives in Glen Innes, which was starting up and it was running. Its battery voltage was 11.5 volts. 60% flat. So 60% of the fuel burn was going to kiss and make up to the battery for the short engine run times and the hours and hours and hours waiting in the car park. The system is designed to run the headlights at the red lights and efficiency doesn't matter as long as the engine starts. If you put a solar panel onto your vehicle you will save fuel, you will save money, there will be more torque available from the crankshaft to drive the gearbox, the car will have more power at low revs per minute I actually get about an extra 8% on my top speed as well. These are the fuel figures for a Ford Explorer driven by Dave at Dave's Act Channel in Canberra. He's gone from 5.67 kilometres to the litre to 7.09 kilometres to the litre with a 20 watt panel and he's done that in less than a month. As it takes 100 days for your battery to deteriorate it takes 100 days for it to recover so his fuel burn is going to get better for a while yet. In America, at Precise Bible, thought he was inventing it. He went from 30 to 34 miles to the gallon by putting solar panels of increasing size on his car. The construction clips are up, 
Have a look on YouTube, search Sunfoil, retrofit your car and drive a hillbilly hybrid. Please.